iMovie is a classic and well-known starter video editing software. iMovie was mine and probably thousands of others' first form of editing video. In this video, we will be covering the introduction of iMovie, iMovie in the Mac OS X era, and iMovie today. Also, near the end of the video, I'll be including a small segment about working with iMovie in a more, not really professional sense, but some really useful workarounds that I used when I was younger trying to make YouTube videos with iMovie. With all that said, let's get right into things where it first began with the introduction of the iMac DV. The iMac DV was an upgrade to the first iMac, also called the Bondi Blue iMac. Everybody's seen it, we all know what it looks like, also known as the iMac G3. This iMac included several things. Some of the key features I want to talk about is the DVD-ROM drive, FireWire ports, and this model was more geared towards the creatives. This is probably something I should have talked about in my iMac for creatives videos, but I kind of forgot about it. This iMac was really geared towards the people who wanted to create digital art, like uh, images and digital video, hence the name DV. They're really beautiful. So iMac DV. Well, wait a minute. Where's the DV? Aha. Uh -huh. Another amazing feature. Another amazing feature. The iMac DV models can play movies. And what does that mean? What that means is is that the new slot load drive in every iMac DV is not a CD-ROM, it is a DVD-ROM drive. So that you can load in, you can load in your greatest, latest DVD-ROM games and other software, but it also plays DVD movies. Right out of the same drive, you can just load in your favorite movies. Right, in and out. You can load in your favorite movies. And it's incredible. And what it does is, <laughs> it takes these DVD movies and it reads them, of course, digitally right off the drive and digitally sends them right up to the IMAX super great quality high resolution display. It's much better than even most DVD players that use NTSC video, some form of S video, even component video. It's all digital all the way up to the display and the quality is really stunning. And so what I'd like to do right now... The iMac DV was shipped with some flagship software, also with uh, Firewire, a, a serial busted time that we'll talk about later. It also had the ability to play DVDs. This was kind of revolutionary at the time. The software here that was included was Mac OS 8.6, QuickTime, and of course, the topic of this video, iMovie. Firewire was a very interesting and innovative form of serial bus in the late 1990s and early 2000s. This was a lot like USB, but at the time it was much faster. It could also daisy chain. For those who are not familiar with the idea of daisy chaining, this pretty much means that you could connect an external drive to another external drive and they'd kind of work together. Now to explain this more thoroughly, let's visualize this. Let's say you have a USB external drive that takes up one port. If you want to connect another one, that takes up another port. But with FireWire, this really was not the case. You could just connect another FireWire cable up to the drives and daisy chain them together, really just link them together, and you would only take up one FireWire port. But with all that aside, I think the main big selling point that Steve Jobs really tried to push in his keynotes was the function of the DVD plane. This was a pretty good selling point for the Mac DV. It was much cheaper just to buy an iMac DV instead of a TV, a DVR, and all the other stuff that we don't typically buy today. Let's say you have an iMac in a classroom. Let's say you're going to have an iMac in your den. Let's say you're going to have an iMac in the kids' room. And you want to let them watch movies. To go out and buy a television and a VCR or even a DVD player, you're going to save over $400 not having to buy this stuff. And you're going to save having all this clutter around because you can do it all now with one box called an iMac DV. Understanding the importance of the Mac DV, I think, is crucial for understanding why iMovie works so well. Since it was now, like, a much easier for the user to get data off of digital camcorders and DVDs, for example, 
It was a no-brainer that Apple needed to include some sort of very basic video editing software so the user could compile and show off their home movies or little home video compilations of holidays or events or picnics, anything like that. This is where iMovie really takes the stage. iMovie was announced with the new Mac TV in 1999, and it was the perfect piece of software to bundle with the machine so the user could take full advantage of the hardware provided. So I'm going to click this, and I've got these little buttons over here. One says titles, and I bring up titles. And uh, I can say I want a centered large title, and I've already typed in my title, which is Ruffy's Bath. I can get a preview of it if I want to, right? And so I'm just going to drag that title down on top of the clip that I want to put it on. And now iMovie is going to go calculate that in very high quality. So it's going to put that title on. And I've already made some uh, rolling credits here, uh, and I put them over here. So I'm going to drag down my rolling credits for the end. And uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about putting in some special effects or transitions in between the clips so that they're not just a cut between one and the next one. So I'm going to go to transitions, and I have all sorts of cool transitions. I have fade-outs, fade-ins, uh, cross-dissolves, all sorts of things, and I like a cross-dissolve. So iMovie, especially in this clip, is a pretty bare-bones video editing software. But this was just enough. This is pretty much perfect for the, the people who just wanted to edit their family movies on DVD iDVD also let people create menus for these family movies when they burned them to disc. For what iMovie was in its very early stages, this was perfect for families and friends in their pursuit of making home videos and little home movies for themselves to enjoy later down the line. Unfortunately, it is rather difficult to find footage or photos of older versions of iMovie today. Wikipedia, however, has a very solid list of changes made in each different version. So using context and the change logs, we can make a very reasonable guess what iMovie 1999 included, and it really wasn't much. iMovie 1999 was an incredibly bare-bones piece of editing software, lacking a lot of the features we take for granted today in video editing software, such as non-destructive video editing. Imagine if you will, we're in Adobe, but I think the concept still applies. Let's say you had some very basic footage here, and you needed to trim it down to fit a smaller section. Maybe it's some B-roll, but it doesn't really matter. Maybe you're going to trim it down to about half the size of what it is so it fits, and then we're going to place it in and expand it out so it fills out the whole area. You couldn't do this on this version of iMovie. To me, this probably would have been one of the first deal breakers, but this would have been probably perfectly fine if I were making a home video, for example. Now, realistically, the videos that I make are not being produced over iMovie. Despite how simple my editing seems, it's, it is actually too complex for iMovie without some major workarounds that we'll discuss near the end of the video. iMovie also only supports two layers of video. You get the primary track and then an overlay track. Most home movies in this case are not going to be using an overlay track unless it's for like some crazy do-it-yourself transition I assume. Besides that, iMovie stayed much of the same until iMovie HD 5 was released in the year 2005, if you couldn't figure that out. This version added support for 1080i and 720p video, as well as full integration within the iLife suite. Transitions were also added in between each of the clips, just to speed things up. This is a positive add, I think, since you can remove them, and hard cuts just don't feel very well at all, in my opinion. I try to use them very rarely when I'm editing. I really only ever use them if it adds to the effect of the video iMovie 6 added templates and more features to streamline the video editing process, turning a rather complicated process into a pretty easy one for the regular consumer. Apple used features and innovations like this to take digs at Microsoft within their Get a Mac commercials. iMovie 8 dropped HD from the title and offered a complete redesign of the UI within the app. Features like skimming were added so users could easily select clips they wanted to from a larger clip. Now, one such man had some major issues of iMovie 8. David Paul, writing for the New York Times, had a lot to say about the changes made. He actually calls iMovie 8 an imposter and goes on and on about how they remove themes and all this other stuff the regular iMovie user was probably not using. Now, I don't have any proof for what I'm about to say, but I think the lack of support for some of these previous features he mentioned was to probably get users on board with Final Cut Pro. Now, Apple is known to pull BS like this before. I remember I was using GarageBand one summer and using the sampler tool, and the next week it was gone. 
Apple is fundamentally a business, and they need to make money somehow. I'm not saying that's right. I completely disagree with this practice, 100%, and I think it's stupid. But it's sort of a necessary evil that we kind of have to deal with when some of these features get removed. Also, I can defend, um, to play devil's advocate for a second, I can de defend the removal of some of these key features. The regular consumer is probably going to be confused when keyframing comes up or when they have to deal with color correction. I think the idea here for Apple was, you know, if we make the app too complex, the regular user is going to get confused, put the app away, and use our competitor software in favor of ours. I don't want to delve too deep on this issue or topic since I do have a video for Final Cut Pro lined up already, and I don't want to cannibalize that future video. iMovie 09 came back and fixed a lot of the issues that David Pogue had and with the 08 version. They brought back a lot of those video effects missing from 08 and added green screen effects and picture-in-picture -picture effects as well. iMovie 11 added the ability to make trailers for your home movies that you're making. They also added the feature to watch your uh, movies on the Apple TV or other Apple devices with iCloud. They added a ton of royalty-free songs and sound effects for better home movies as well. When I think of iMovie, I typically think of this version and the next. This is also when iMovie was released on uh, iOS. This version uh, is what I used a lot when I was a kid, and it is probably solely responsible for me trying to get into film and content creation. Some of the earliest videos I've ever made and uploaded to the internet were made of iMovie. I tried doing a lot of stuff that would be considered insane to try on iMovie, but since I was broke and didn't know about Final Cut Pro, I just kept doing it in these weird workaround ways, which we'll talk about later of course. After 2013, iMovie adopted the 10.x style of names. There has been many more additions since then. This is largely the same as it was in 2013. There's been some additions here and there, but nothing game changing. Today, iMovie serves as a great basic tool to get yourself introduced to video editing. Although it lacks many of the features that I take for granted every day, you know, like seeing where your keyframes are, or more than two layers, this is a very solid application to use for very short basic projects. Apple's also optimized this app to run very efficiently on the Apple Silicon chips. Now I think it's time for the workarounds that I promised at the beginning of the video. So the first workaround I'm going to talk about is having more than two layers. So while yes, you can only really have two layers in the software, there is a very long way around this. Now if you export the entire project with everything you need in your primary and overlay layer, and you better make sure it's fully complete since this practice takes up a ton of storage and not to mention time, you can essentially add a new layer. I think I used this a few times years ago but I don't really have any proof of it. If I did, I'd show you. Um, I Typically, I usually compromised and limited the video editing down instead of going all out. Next thing I'm going to tell you about is custom titles. The basic iMovie titles have never been my favorite. I've always preferred a flat text. For some dumb reason, flat text isn't on iMovie, so to get around this, go open Keynote and create a slot with a no-fill background. After you've put in the text, go to export it, Go to images, select PNG and make sure it's transparent. After this, go ahead and drop the new title in. You can use really any software like GIMP or Photoshop. I always use Keynote since it was already on the Mac and it was the easiest thing to use at the time. So the third workaround I'm going to tell you, I never used this personally but I did see it online and it is pretty clever. So let's say you needed, a, uh, you needed your video and iMovie to be specifically 1080p but you don't have any 1080p footage, so what are you going to do? So iMovie actually sets the resolution of the video based on the first clip you drop in the timeline. So if it's 4K, for example, it's going to be a 4K clip. Good luck trying to get 1080p out of that. Essentially what you can do is you're going to go up Keynote, you're going to make a 1080p slide, export that into iMovie, and now you have a 1080p project. It's pretty simple. Think of this as punching a hole through a piece of paper, and everything you add in is going to have to be fit into that hole. I mentioned earlier how keyframing was not too good. Well, when you do a keyframe, use the M key to mark where you put your keyframes on a timeline so you can properly edit. This only works with picture and picture modes though, so you're kind of limited in that factor. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to check out all the other stuff I've done before in the past few weeks. If you really enjoyed the channel, then consider subscribing or becoming a member since it helps the channel out a ton, especially when making these videos. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you all next week.
Thank you.